Hey, hey, good morning, SCF Kids. Welcome back to SCF Kids Online Week. I don't even know anymore because we've been going for a while, but that's great. Uh, so glad you're here. Um, how many of you had a good chuckle at some of those pranks that were in the pre-service video today? I know I always love watching a good prank, especially when it's happening to somebody else, not to me. So I'm curious though, how many of you have ever pulled a really good prank? And I'm talking a really good prank on somebody. I would love to hear those stories. So post a video of you telling me your story to the SCF Kids Ministry page because I could use a few extra laughs this week. Uh, I will be waiting patiently for those. So don't forget about me, please. Um, but I also am wondering how many of you have spent the last few seconds trying to figure out what's wrong with your screen and why I'm upside down. But that's just me playing a trick on you. So I got gotcha. you. Some of you, maybe some of you were already on to me, but uh, I was playing a trick on you. I'm sorry. We'll just have to fix that right now, okay? And here we go. Boom. I'm right side up. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of tricking people, last week in our story, we had Jacob and Rebecca who tricked Isaac into giving the blessing that was meant for Esau to Jacob. But the trickery continues in our story today. And um, actually this time, Jacob's not the one tricking somebody, but he is the one that gets tricked. So check out this video and see what happens. Jacob traveled from Bethel toward his uncle Laban's land. He came to a well where shepherds were watering their sheep. The shepherds were from Haran. Do you know a man named Laban? Jacob asked. Yes, they said. Here comes his daughter Rachel with his sheep. Rachel brought the sheep to the well and Jacob gave them water. Jacob told Rachel that he was her relative, a son of Rebekah. <gasps> Rachel ran to tell her father Laban. Laban welcomed Jacob into his house. Jacob stayed with Laban and worked for him. After about a month, Laban said, what should I pay you for your work? Now, Laban had two daughters. The older was named Leah and the younger was Rachel. Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will work for you seven years if you will let me marry Rachel. Laban agreed. Jacob worked for seven years, but he loved Rachel so much that that seven years seemed like only a few days. Then Laban had a feast, but instead of giving Rachel to Jacob, Laban gave his older daughter Leah. Jacob was upset. Why did you trick me? He asked. Laban said, around here, the older daughter must be married before the younger. I will give you Rachel too, but you must work another seven years. So a week later, Jacob married Rachel. Then he worked for Laban seven more years. Now Jacob had two wives, but he loved Rachel more than Leah. When God saw Leah was not loved, he gave her children. Rachel wanted children too. God heard her prayer, and in time, God gave her children too. In all, Jacob had 12 sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. God told Jacob to go home to the land of Canaan so Jacob gathered his family and his possessions, and he headed home. Nothing could stop God's plan for the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even though Jacob did not love Leah, God loved her and used her in his plan. Through the family of Jacob and Leah's son Judah, God would show his love for the world by sending his son to be the savior he promised. All right, so do you guys remember the big picture question from last week? 
It starts off by saying, does God keep his promises? And the answer is, God keeps his promises because he is faithful. Now, we're going to do it two more times. The first time we're going to say it as fast as a cheetah, and the second time we're going to say it as slow as a turtle. Okay? So I'm going to ask the question. You're going to respond as fast as a cheetah. Okay? Here we go. Does God keep his promises? God keeps his promises because he is faithful. Were you faster than me? I thought I heard a few of you speeding up even past me. You guys are speedy like cheetahs. All right, the second time, slow as a turtle. Here we go. Does God keep his promises? God keeps his promises because he is faithful. That was really slow and really hard to do, actually. I think the fast as a cheetah was probably easier than the slow as a turtle. Anyways, what great encouragement that is to know that we never have to worry because God is always faithful. Despite all of the tricks in our story today, nothing could stop God's plan for the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even though Jacob did not love Leah, God loved her and used her in his plan. Through the family of Jacob and Leah's son Judah, God would show his love for the world by sending his son to be the savior he promised. And this is how we know that God loves us too. Hey friends, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Audrey from Holt, Michigan asks, Does God love me? How do I know? Audrey, that is a great question that really connects well with today's Bible story, doesn't it? Because in today's Bible story, we see that God had planned to bless the entire world through Abraham's family. He had promised that one day he would send a rescuer through them. And that's why it's so important for Isaac to find a wife before this and for Jacob to find a wife here. This family had to keep going. But as always, there's more to the story than just that. God also loved Abraham and his family. He cared deeply for them. So we see here that he provided Rachel for Jacob, but we also see how much Jacob loved her. God gives the best gifts. And that is how we can know that God loves us, because of the greatest gift that he has given us. Romans 5, 8 tells us that God proves his love for us by giving us Jesus. We didn't deserve Jesus. Our salvation is a gift. Now, that's not the only way we can know that God loves us, but it is the greatest way. If you ever question if God loves you, all you have to do is remember Jesus, who God gave for you. And don't ever forget that this is a message that your friends need to know about as well. What are some ways that you can show God's love to others? All right, you guys, uh, Neon Nancy here with your memory verse game for today. Uh, so how we're gonna start this off is we're gonna read the verse together just to familiarize ourselves with it because it is a big verse, if you remember from last week. So right here beside me on the wall is our verse and we're gonna read it together on the count of three. One, two, three. I am with you, hang on. Why are you guys not reading it with me? Neon Nancy, they don't call me that for nothing. Uh, yeah, I tricked you again. Um, I had the lights off. I'm standing in complete darkness and bam, here we go. All right, can you see the verse now? Awesome, let's read it together. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. All right, all right, do I have any more tricks? I don't think so. Uh, well, maybe this one. I have some glow sticks in my pocket, and how this game is gonna work is I'm gonna toss up the glow sticks, and however many I catch is however many words in our verse that I'm gonna block out, okay? Now, my catching skills are not very good, so I'm sure it won't be too difficult. Brace yourselves. Here goes round number one. Oh, actually not too bad. I caught three. So I'm gonna stick those back in my pocket. 
And I have my trusty notepad here. I'm going to pick three words to take out. I'm going to take that one, that one, and that one. All right, now this is not straight. It's bugging me. Okay, let's try this again. One, two, three. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. Hang on a second, I gotta find my glow sticks on the floor. All right, we are locked and loaded. Here goes round number two. How many, throw out a guess, how many do you think you're gonna catch this time? One, you guys have great confidence in me. Here we go. Oh, I actually caught none. I wasn't kidding when I said I wasn't very good at this. Whoop. And here we go. Round two, take two. Nothing again, I'm telling you, I'm gonna need your help on this. You guys got any glow sticks at home you can throw up and catch? Okay, let's try this again. Ah, I did it. I got three. Three again. All right. Shout out which word you think I should take out. Uh, Genesis. Sounds good to me. What else? Shout them out nice and loud so I can hear you over here in Savile Beach. Wherever. Good choice. Uh, what about land? Okay. Let's try this again. One, two, three. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. Okay, let's try one more time. Who thinks I can catch all six of these? Hands up if you think I can catch all six. I like you. You have great confidence in me. All right, here we go. Ooh, I use two hands. Is that cheating? Nah, I make up my own rules. Four. I got four this time. All right, last round. Which words are we going to lose this time? What about I? Keep losing the bottom of my notepad here. Until will, and I get one more choice, bring. All right, here we go. Last time, nice and loud, I want to hear you over here in Savile Beach, okay? One, two, three. I am with you, and I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Genesis 28, 15. Well, that was a great time together. I hope you enjoyed Neon Nancy, and uh, maybe you can have some of your own nightlight fun at home today, um, having some glow, maybe you're at glow sticks at home. Maybe you even have a black light. I happen to have one of those too. Anyways, have a great day, practice this verse, and maybe I'll see you again next week. Psalm 100 says, Sing to the Lord all the world. Worship the Lord with joy. Come before him with happy songs. Acknowledge the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people. We are his flock. Enter the temple gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. The Lord is good. His love is eternal. And his faithfulness, there's that word again, lasts forever. When I think about all that God has promised us and all that he had promised Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, I cannot help but sing praises to him. It makes me take my focus off of all of the things in my life and it puts my focus on him and his faithfulness and his goodness. And so let's worship our creator and king together.
Can you forgive me? No one knows me, God, like you. You see who I am, not what I do. And you forgive me. You take all the pieces of my life, put them back together, make it all. to wrap up again but as we think back over our story today it definitely contained a lot of tricks and our trickster Jacob from last week met his match with his uncle Laban who then tricked him into marrying Leah instead of Rachel and then he had to work another seven years but the trickery didn't end there because then Jacob didn't tell Laban that he was leaving and it goes back and forth and back and forth those moments where they were tricking each other and not telling the 100% truth just shows that they didn't trust in God's promises in those moments. And I think sometimes we can do that in our lives. We don't trust God 100%, so maybe we just don't tell the 100% of the truth, or we trick somebody um, into thinking something that's not true. But um, I hope that you're encouraged today that God is faithful, because remember, does God keep his promises? God keeps his promises because he is faithful. We don't have to worry. We can always trust God and his promises. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for another time together this morning. And God, I pray that we would trust in your promises, that we would know, in your, know and trust your faithfulness, and that we wouldn't have to worry. God, that you would keep us on the right path, that we would trust you with each and every decision in our lives. So God, would you go with us today? Would we honor you in everything that we do? In Jesus' name, amen.